Three-time All-American, national champion, and former Cornell coach, Dave Petromala, welcome in the crease. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. Okay. Cornell, what was it like for your first job, and how do you feel like that kind of helps you? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, it was a great experience. Cornell was a, a great place. Um, took a chance on a, a young and raw and uh, energetic coach. Um, obviously, my first head coaching position. You know, it's amazing when you look back, you say, gosh, I can't believe I did that. Or I can't believe we did that or made those decisions. And, it, it, you know, the old saying, there's nothing like experience. Uh, it really is true. But uh, w w what an unbelievable uh, opportunity, uh, you know, at a young age, I think it was 28, to become the head coach at a, at a tradition-rich program like Cornell, a great academic institution like Cornell. And uh, uh, my time up there was, was very special. Uh, the young men that we had a chance to, to work with, uh, as much as they bought into to Cornell and Cornell lacrosse, they bought into us, to our coaching staff and the, and the vision that we had. So I was really blessed to, to be there, to be there with Jeff Tambroni, the current Penn State coach, um, and have a, just a wonderful experience while we were there. Three-time All-American. Is it kind of hard for you to, because a lot of times when you're that player, is it hard to translate to get that to your players? You know, I, I, I don't look at it that way. Um, I know there's the old adage that a great player doesn't make a great coach because they don't know why they were great. Um, I look at lots of people and, uh, you know, you look at Larry Bird and, you know, he was pretty successful. Uh, there are lots of those examples out there, but quite frankly, I, I don't look at it that way. I just look at myself as a, a former player. Uh, I was blessed to be around great coaches uh, in high school and at Johns Hopkins and even in the club ranks. Um, you know, so I, I take with me a wealth of experience, uh, a ton of uh, valuable lessons, um, you know, and, and, and I think because I was around those kinds of people, um, you know, I learned how to work. I learned how to, I learned how to understand the game, and I, I, and I understood not just what to do, but why we were doing it. And uh, I think, you know, for me, that was the, one of the great values of being at Johns Hopkins and playing for a, a coach like Don Zimmerman. You know, we always know the what, the why, and, and, and the how, not just the, the how. Speak, speaking a little bit about club, a lot of kids will be watching this and things like that. How important do you think is club lacrosse, along with being a two-sport athlete or a three-sport athlete? You're, you're hitting like the, the hot button topic these days. Uh, we would prefer two and th three sport athletes, quite, quite simply and quite honestly. Uh, you know, I was uh, a basketball player and, and a baseball player in, in, in high school. Lacrosse came to me late in 11th grade. Um, so I was a, a beneficiary of those other sports. They helped me with lacrosse. Um, you know, f for us, we're looking for young guys that have different experiences. There's a lot to be said for going through two days in football. There's a lot to be said for, you know, the skill and the footwork that's necessarily to necessary to play soccer. Um, the similarities between lacrosse and basketball, um, hockey, the hand-eye coordination, wrestling, you know, the technique and toughness. Um, there's so many valuable, you know, uh, attributes that translate um, but in, in all honesty you know what we want is we want young men quite frankly that haven't been playing just lacrosse the, their their whole life we want someone whose ceiling isn't here but but is here because they play football or soccer in the fall they play basketball or wrestle or you know uh, they, they swim in the winter um, we want young men that that have a greater ceiling, and, and that ceiling's greater because they haven't put all their time, energy, and effort into just one sport. Um, we've become so specialized, and, and you know, it's really not a word that I think's a, a great word when it comes to us looking at recruits. We're looking for guys that are, that, that are doing more than one thing. Speaking of recruiting, it's getting younger and younger. What are your thoughts on how the recruiting is now going? I've been extremely outspoken with my displeasure for it, but I've also been, you know, very forthright, you know, in our guilt. And we are a guilty participant of it. I think uh, Coach LaMonica, when you interviewed her, mentioned it's a necessary evil. Um, you know, sadly enough, many of us, I think, feel it, it is. And uh, quite frankly, 
Uh, we're at a point right now where we're starting to go the other way. Uh, we're starting to get frustrated with decommitments. We're starting to get frustrated with maybe making some mistakes. We're starting to get frustrated with um, not getting to know the young men like we used to. The window of opportunity to get to know a young man and his family was much greater years ago, and you could get to know them over a two or three year process. And coaches, we're information machines. We want to know, we want more and more information, and yet we're taking young people with less and less information. So I'd love to see um, the legislation that's been put in front of the NCAA. I'd love to see it passed, uh, stating that we couldn't have any contact whatsoever with anybody uh, until September 1 of their junior year. Uh, you could evaluate, which I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. But the fact of the matter is, you know, when they're 13, 14, and 15, they're in such formidable years. Um, I think the decisions that will be made will be more educated decisions. Uh, I think there'll be more firm commitments, and the word, you know, commitment will carry greater meaning. Um, I, I just think we're on a very slippery slope now, and uh, I don't know if we've seen the positives or the negatives of it on the field as much because the sample size is still pretty small. But 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 in terms of the actual recruitment of the right players for your program, the more information we have, the better for them, the better for us, the better for their families. Okay, just a couple more things. I'll get yeah, you out sure. of the crease. Shot clock. What do you think about, I mean, it seems like it's working for the women. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think about shot clock for the guys? Shot clock is a good question. And uh, I'm a guy that's probably come 360 degrees. Um, I was not in favor of the shot clock. I was not in favor of a lot of things. And as you have different experiences and different teams, um, obviously your opinions change. Uh, I would be very much in favor of a shot clock for really one very simple reason. I think we've made uh, the job of officials extraordinarily difficult. Not only do these guys have a challenging job of judgment calls, but now they're going to be, you know, clock keepers. You know, now they've got to determine what's a stall, what's not, who's playing offense, who's not, who's taking a legitimate shot or a possession shot. I think we've, instead of making their job easier, uh, harder, I'm, I'm sorry, instead of making that job easier, I think we've made it 10 times more difficult for them. So I think a shot clock would speed up the game a little bit. Um, I think put some more fans in, in seats, but I also think it would make the job of officials a lot, a lot easier and, and a lot better. Okay, just a couple players, a couple thoughts that you have on them. They can be quick. A guy named Kyle Harrison, what comes to mind? Uh, greatness is, is, is a word that comes to, to mind. Uh, you know, Kyle is uh, a pretty special young man. I had a chance to uh, recruit him, uh, get to know the family very well. I'm still very, very close with him, stay in touch with him. And uh, I'm very proud of the, the, the man he's become. Um, you know, Kyle's a, a young guy that I think carried with him a great, greater responsibility than most. Um, as a young African-American at one of the old Blue Blood programs, you know, Kyle came in and I thought he took his responsibility in that arena very seriously and has opened doors for young men and women um, you know, across the country. So uh, he was a special one. Paul Rabel? Wow, um, another, uh, another one of the greats. Um, I think you're, you're talking about Paul and Kyle, two of the all-time greats at Johns Hopkins. When I think about Paul, you know, the first word for me comes to mind is work. Um, you know, there are some people that are just gifted. They're blessed with size, athleticism, you know, um, IQ for a sport. Um, Paul has worked for everything he's gotten. You know, he's one of those guys that you look at and you say, you know what, God, you look, you look at him and say, oh, he's just so big. It's easy for him. Paul has worked for everything he's gotten. He's taken the game to kind of a new level, a different approach. Uh, and I'm extraordinarily impressed uh, with his dedication and his work ethic. And, uh, you know, while he and Kyle are very different players, um, you know, their attention to detail, their passion for the sport and their work ethic are both very similar. Okay, last question. Someone wants to come to Hopkins. They're a good ball player. They like lacrosse. 
What, what do you tell them? What, what do they get if they come to Hopkins? Uh, what you hope is, is you tell a family that, you know, our, our goal is to help a, a young person become the best version of themselves they can, they can be. The hope is that they're going to become a complete individual. Uh, and, you know, you simply put, what do they get when they come to Hopkins? They become the best person, the best student, and the best player they can be. Um, ultimately, that's our goal. Uh, yeah, we all want to win. We want to win Big Ten championships. We want to compete and win national championships. But at the end of the day, uh, our job as teachers, our job as coaches and mentors is to help each young man that comes through our program uh, to become the best version of himself that he can be though, so that when he does leave Johns Hopkins, he's prepared for, prepared for the challenges that he's going to face later, uh, later on in life. Uh, it's a wonderful place in, uh, and a truly, truly a special experience. Coach, thanks for coming in the crease. Thanks for having me.